clear folks that we're waiting on, but I think we've given them enough time to sign in, so we'll go ahead and begin. Um, before we start, just some instructions informing you that you can participate in the webinar either by using your computer microphone and speakers or dialing in by telephone. Um, it looks like everyone today is using uh, their computer speakers and microphone. You can change that if you want to call in by phone uh, in the audio section of the GoToWebinar software. Uh, since we have a large group here today, um, I'll ask that you type in any questions that you have during the presentation into the chat panel or the questions panel. Uh, Becca will pick up any questions that you ask during my presentation. And at the end, during our question and answer session, there is a raise hand button. So once we get to that part of the presentation, if you click that and you have a question, I can unmute you and then you can ask it uh, to the entire group. So that's how we'll handle that. So today's webinar, uh, we're going to be talking about Zoom Text Image Reader and go over some uh, advanced tips in using the product. Uh, my name is Derek Bovey. I work here as our technical product manager. So I'll be walking you through some of these things here today. Um, so let's take a look at what we're going to cover. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how you can use Image Reader with Zoom Text Recorder, an easy way to take uh, text that you've, uh, or pictures that you've converted to text and then record them with Zoom Text. Um, I'll show you how to use the screen tool. Uh, to access inaccessible text, like if you had a PDF document that was protected or was just an image and didn't contain any text, there is a tool within Image Reader to allow you to convert that uh, to readable text. Um, then I'll go through and show you a couple of the document export options that are available in Image Reader. So you can export your text out to a document format like a PDF or a Word document, for example, and I'll explain some of the differences between those. We'll also um, show you a comparison of the two cameras, so the A3 and the A4 camera. We're going to start the demonstration with the A3 camera, and then I'll transition over to the A4 and show you how much bigger uh, of a footprint that it can capture with a magazine open to two pages, left and right pages. And then lastly, we'll show you a couple of the options that you have available in Image Reader when using it with Zoom Text uh, in terms of uh, tracking options. So that will be the last thing we'll look at. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into uh, the live demonstration. And first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and launch Image Reader. Okay, I don't have it running. It is a separate application from Zoom Text. So I double clicked on its icon. Image Reader is opening up. And here's a preview image of our camera. There's nothing underneath it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a document and put it underneath. Okay, so we've got our document underneath. The camera is adjusting uh, its white balance. So right now you see it's a little washed out, but it will uh, gradually get into focus. There we go. And simply uh, all I need to do is click that snap button or press control space bar to capture the Waiting image. Waiting for camera image to stabilize. It's detecting that the lighting is still changing, so it's, it's telling me that it's waiting for the camera image to stabilize. So sometimes that can happen in, in different lighting conditions. Zoom text tips and tricks. Okay, so it finished um, converting the document. We've got all of our text here, all right, and it automatically started reading. I just went ahead and paused it by hitting the space bar. So we've got all of our, all of our text. Now let's say we wanted to record this uh, with Zoom text recorder. So first thing I'll do is go ahead and start Zoom text and show you just how easy that is by using hotkeys uh, to be able to take the text in Image Reader and then record it out with Zoom Text Recorder um, really fast and easy. So Zoom Text is up. I'll go to Image Reader. And very simply, to select all of the text, I'll just press Control-A. So that selects all. And the hotkey to start recorder for my selection is Control-Caps-Lock-S, as in Sam. That opens up the Zoom Text Recorder dialog. We've got all of our text in here. Um, so this is our Zoom Text tick tips and tricks on uh, NeoSpeech Dictionary. Okay, I'm going to export that out to iTunes. If you haven't seen us demonstrate Zoom Text Recorder before, please check out the uh, What's New in Zoom Text 10 webinar on our website. Um, we go through this tool in, at more length. So I'm going to export this out to iTunes, click Record Text. So what I've done is I've taken the text 
from Image Reader. Okay, took a picture of a document, uh, which is a script for one of our last tips and tricks videos. Um, recorded it out to Zoom Text Recorder. Here's iTunes automatically open, and at the bottom of our list here, which is in the Zoom Text Recorder playlist, you'll see here's my Zoom Text tips and tricks. Neo Speech Dictionary, two minutes thirteen seconds. Go ahead and click play. Zoom Text Tips and Tricks, editing Neo Speech Dictionary. Hello and welcome to this Tips and Tricks video for Zoom. And I'll fast forward a little bit just so you can hear different parts of it. The Options button in the English User Dictionary Editor dialog opens. Okay, so you can see it's really fast and easy to be able to take text from Image Reader and then record it out. So think about if you were doing something uh, like taking a picture of a magazine article. So let's go back. I'm going to click the Capture button and I'm just going to choose something different to take a picture of. So um, I've got a Men's Health magazine here with an article uh, about Hugh Jackman. All right. So here's uh, one of the pages. I can't fit the entire um, magazine in view with the A3 camera, but I can get one of the pages. All right. It's a little bit skewed, but that shouldn't matter. So I'm just going to click Snap. Okay. It's processing, and there's quite a bit of text. Uh, within this article, so it might take a few more seconds than our um, than just eight and a half by eleven. She Jackman remembers it vividly. Double quote: We got killed in the reviews. Scathing. Okay, so let me disable Zoom text here for a second, um, so you can see all the text is here. All right, um, pretty accurate. There's a couple errors here and there. It's probably due to the lighting, but for the most part, uh, very accurate. But again. You know, whatever you have uh, taken a picture of, control A to select all of it, control caps lock S, and we can make our recording. Uh, okay, let's call it Hugh Jackman article. Click record. And then it will uh, convert it and bring it into iTunes. So it's really easy. Again, take a picture, control A, control caps lock S, click record and you're good to go. Oops. Yes, control N does not work in. Hugh Jackman remembers it vividly. Prince Theron Witch, according to New York Magazine, Mac. Spark. Okay. So again, really easy to be able to take that resulting text in Image Reader and um, record it out with Zoom Text 10. All right. So now let's do something different. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change some things up here and minimize image reader for the time being. Um, let's say we had a PDF document that uh, we wanted to read but couldn't because it was inaccessible. All right, let's say that this document I had here uh, was you know a protected PDF document that I couldn't read. All right, so with image reader, there's an option under the uh, source menu here. If you click the down arrow, you've got four different um, different inputs: the camera, an image file, the clipboard, or the screen. So the screen tool is going to be able, allow you to take a screenshot of anything visible on screen and OCR it. So if this PDF document was inaccessible, I could use the screen tool to be able to convert that to text and then have it read back to me. All right, so I'll change my source here to screen. Notice that we're back. Uh, it'll minimize Image Reader and the last application that was open behind it will be visible. My mouse turns into what looks like a crosshair. And I can simply left click and drag my mouse to make a selection. All right, similar to the Speak It tool in Zoom Text. Kill the silvery locks are all crumbled and curled. Then the wind came and blew away his head. And off it flew a great way. All right, so you can see it took all that text that I had highlighted, and now it's reading it back to me in Image Reader. Uh, if you click on the Image tab, you'll see uh, a preview of the image that was captured as well. Okay, so in the event that you know, let's say I did this, and you know, I made my selection like this. Okay, and I'm wondering. Uh, in the text view, backslash why it's reading things strangely. I can look at my image and see, well, I've got things cut off up here. 
which is giving image reader some trouble. There's a bunch of text that's cut off there. So, you know, if something seems weird, you can always inspect the uh, screenshot as well. Um, and this will work on anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be a PDF document. It can be any text uh, on your computer. So, um, let's say, oh, I don't know. I mean, I've got a bunch of PDF documents here, but let's say I was on a web page. Uh, I'll just use our web page as an example. Um, and you've got graphic images. All right, if those didn't have associated alt tags with them, you wouldn't be able to read them with Zoom text. Um, they do, so you can read them. But in the event that they didn't, you could make a, a screen capture of the image. Image reader has arrived. Okay. I don't know where that came from. I must have captured a little bit too much. Or I apparently thought that there were some letters in the graphic there. But if you look at text, as you can see, and hear it read. Okay, so that's what the screen tool does. All right. Um, so we're going to change our camera, our, our source back to camera. Um, the one thing I want to show you next are the different document export options. These are actually really cool. So uh, let me get an article that we could use. Um, I want to try and get something that has a little bit of images along with text because that's going to be the best way to demonstrate this. This might be a good example here. Okay. So here again is another article. Um, and what I'm going to do this time, since there's a little bit of, of text bleeding through from the other page, I'm going to use the crop tool to just dial into the actual article itself. Um, so I can cut out some of the extraneous information here, like the banner at the top, and just get the article. Okay? This will generally help your OCR result if you use these crop handles to just dial into what you want to take a picture of. All right, so this is what we're going to take a picture of. Uh, I'll click this. Waiting for camera image to stabilize. And again, the lighting in the room is changing a lot because of ambient light coming in through the window. So that's why this is delaying and waiting for that to change. Um, since we're looking at glossy material, I generally keep the light of the camera off because uh, otherwise it'll create a hot spot. So uh, the ambient light is changing, and that's why the, the, there's a bit of a delay there. Again, really complex material, so this is going to take a little bit longer. Um, if it takes a very long time, money, remember all the generally, if it takes a really long time, it's struggling with the text content, and you may not get good results. Um, this looks pretty good here. Okay. So the different document export types that you have, if you go to the File menu and choose Save, um, you're going to see in the Save dialog there are a number of different formats. You've got PDF. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, HTML, plain text, uh, or you can just save out the image. I'm going to focus on PDF and Word because they're the most useful. So I'm going to change my save type to PDF, and I'll call this, uh, the title of this article is called Dumb Money. I'm not sure why, but uh, so we'll make the PDF version, and then um, I'll go back and also go back in there and create a Word version of it. Okay, so now that we've done that, I've actually saved these onto the desktop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open them now. So I'll open the PDF first. And basically, when you look at this, and I'm going to turn on Zoom text here in a minute, um, it just looks like a picture that we took, right? So you might not think that there's any text here. Well, the cool thing is, even though uh, the PDF document basically looks like the picture we took. You can actually use Zoom text to read the information. There's text underneath here. I can actually select with my mouse if I wanted to. Um, but the cool thing is I can use App Reader and have it read back to me. Dumb money. Remember all the guys who went broke in 2008? Here is why. It could happen to you in 2013. In Yali. It looks safe to Now, one thing I want to mention here, a lot of magazines do this, where they have the first letter in this big block text uh, followed by the rest of the word. That's going to give OCR engines trouble. So it basically dropped that letter and thought that this was the word. So that's why it read that funny. Um, there's no real way around that. There's just no intelligence built into the OCR engine to support that. Hopefully, in the future, uh, they'll be able to support that. But a lot of magazines do this 
and uh, you may see it dropping the letter. To get back in the stock market, the bad old days of economic crisis are behind us. Okay, so you can see um, how this works in the PDF. Again, we're basically looking at the picture we took, uh, but there is text there that can be read with Zoom text or really any other screen reader. Um, now, the one problem you have with the PDF format is the text quality is going to be kind of grainy because we're basically just looking at a picture. So if you zoom in on it with Zoom text, it's going to look pretty jagged. Um, you're probably better off zooming in Adobe Reader instead. However, it's still going to be pretty blurry uh, when magnifying. So let me disable Zoom text and now open the Word document version. And this is going to be a little bit different. Um, so you can see that there are kind of these areas chopped out of it where there are graphics. There's images here that was in the middle of that document. Uh, let me just go back and show you the, the PDF here uh, so you can see. So in the middle of the article, there's that big graphic of Benjamin Franklin. Okay, That is retained in the Word version. But the cool thing is all of the text actually matches uh, the font style, color, and font face of the actual document and it's just written in a Word document like you would normally type. Okay, so it retains all that information. The other great thing is it still looks good with Zoom text when you're magnifying. Uh, so as I zoom in, you're going to see we have X font on all the text. And again, you can use any of the reading tools. Why? Individual investors, folks like you are buying stocks again from 2009 to 2012. Investors pulled $380 billion out of equity mutual funds. Okay, so you can see that um, that is one benefit from using Microsoft Word. All right, so those are really the two most helpful uh, document formats. The nice thing about Word is that you kind of get the best of both worlds. You're going to get really good-looking uh, text when magnifying with Zoom text. You're also going to retain any images that were in the document uh, as well. Um, the PDF version is also nice because you can see the actual document, what it looks like, um, in the event there's problems with layout and things like that, you're looking at the actual picture. Like things like this, uh, I don't think will be retained in the uh, Word document. It's kind of like this weird graphic of a pair of glasses. I don't know if it retained that. It didn't. So it probably tried to interpret that as some sort of text characters. Um, so again, there's, there's pluses and minuses to both. Um, but I think Word is probably the better uh, compromise of the two. Um, output formats. Now you can save out as plain text if you like. Um, if I do that, it's just going to be text. Um, there's no formatting, there's no pictures, so you kind of don't retain any of the context of what you're reading. It's just the resulting text. All right, so you see that opened up in Notepad. Okay. Now, alternatively, you can also save out the picture. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly what you would want to do that for. Maybe you'd want to send the picture that you took to someone. I'm not sure. Uh, but you can save out just the image uh, if you wanted to as well. All right, so there's a number of different formats there. Uh, but Word and PDF are really going to be uh, the most useful of the two. All right. Um, okay. Moving on, the next thing I'm going to show you uh, is a comparison of the two cameras. So you can see here what the A3 camera is able to see. It's basically, if I get a 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, the footprint is a little bit bigger than 8.5 by 11. Okay, You can see that there are some black areas uh, around the mat here uh, that the camera is still able to capture. So a little bit bigger than 8.5 by 11. And basically, if we had a magazine, it's only able to capture one of the two pages, the left or right hand side of the magazine, all right, you're not able to get um, both pages. Now if I switch over to the A4 can or excuse me, is A3 the bigger one? Yeah. Okay. I got that I always get that mixed up because I think larger number means larger camera, right? A4 is the eight and a half by eleven ish camera. The A3 is the larger one which has effectively double the footprint. So you're going to see in a couple seconds here uh, what the A3 camera is looking at. And I've got a magazine open to both pages. Uh, maybe I'll turn on Zoom Tech so you can see it here. Um, it is upside down, but 
Um, we've got the magazine open to both pages. There's a lot of text here. Uh, so if we go ahead and I'm actually going to just restart this real quick. Sometimes when you switch cameras, and I wouldn't expect people to be switching cameras all that often, you probably only have one, um, but the crop handles will disappear if you're switching cameras, and I just wanted to get these in here. So I'm going to take a picture of this entire magazine, both left and right hand pages, and I just want to get the article text. All right, so again, open to both pages. I'll click Snap. And this is going to take a little bit longer because we're dealing with two full pages now. Um, a lot of text, a lot of small fonts, but you're going to see that the results should still be pretty good here. Wilson, other than his height. Double quote, I got nothing. Double quote, Bevel told him. It turns out height should not have been any concern at all. Okay, I'm going to pause this and show you the image so you can see what we're looking at. Uh, let me zoom this out. So you've got two full pages here, and you can see if I drag this over, you can even see the spine uh, of the magazine right here. Um, but again, lots of text. These are multi-column um, sections here. But if I choose, let's see, the end of one, it should go to the beginning of the next here. Line, L line of scrim. Come on, go to the next one. Well, sometimes it might get hung up depending on the uh, layout. And a lot of these magazines have these very custom formats. They don't follow any sort of rules in terms of uh, column order. And a lot of times pictures like this, if they're right in the middle, uh, might give the OCR engine trouble in terms of getting the order correct. Says, says he is double quote blown away by left square bracket Wilson of common belief in himself. Okay, so you can see that that uh, column did work correctly. But again, so with the A3 camera, you're getting double the footprint. So I was able to capture both of those pages and effectively get most um, of the article I was trying to read in that. And uh, I also I did a recording of this earlier. If I open it up, just to kind of give you an idea um, as to how long this was. Uh, this amount of text. I think it was 13 minutes long recorded. Um, I just named it test. Yeah, it's 11 and a half minutes. So there's a lot of text here. Think about 11 and a half minutes worth of text, uh, how long that would be to read that amount of information, how small that text is, and um, pretty accurate results if we look in here. Um, there's a couple of errors here and there. And sometimes it's going to be hard to get 100% accuracy 100% of the time. Because a lot of the issue you're dealing with is environmental factors like lighting. So if I don't have ideal lighting, and in this room, admittedly, we do not, um, you know that that can impact your results. If if the uh, you know if the pages are crinkled or bent or something like that, that could also play a part. But you can see for the most part here, as I'm scrolling through, um, there's very few errors. And for the most part, this is extremely accurate. Okay, so again, uh, the basic difference between the two cameras. All right, so here's the A3 camera, and just to show you, if I flip pages here, you know, you're seeing the entire magazine. Now, if we go back to the A4 camera, and I get my magazine out here. All right, so here. You know, I can't even fit the entire magazine in there if I had it open. I can only fit one half of the pages. All right, so one of the two pages. Okay, so that's the basic difference between the two. Uh, effectively, double the footprint. So if you're reading a lot of magazines or newspapers uh, where you've got um, a lot of content uh, that you want to read at one time, that might be a better uh, choice to get the A3 camera, the bigger one. Uh, to suit those needs. I think most people are going to like the A4 camera uh, if you're dealing with mostly letter-sized materials, and it's also um, a little bit more portable. Uh, it's not as big. The A3 camera is significantly larger, and also thus making it a little bit more difficult to transport. Okay, so that's the difference between the two cameras. Um, Hundred dollar difference in price, by the way, if you're curious about that. 
All right. Uh, last thing we're going to show you um, is some of the options that you have uh, for Zoom text when using it with Image Reader. And for those of you that might uh, be new to Image Reader, maybe haven't sat in on one of our other webinars, um, Image Reader can be used as a standalone product or with Zoom text. All right. So you don't have to have Zoom text in order to use Image Reader, um, but using the two together can be pretty good. Um, if you go to the Preferences menu in Image Reader and then choose Program, you'll see on the uh, Preferences window here, you have options for Zoom text. And basically what these are are the different uh, settings for how you want Zoom text to behave when Image Reader is reading. The, def the default behavior is any time Image Reader encounters a new line or starts reading a new line of text, it will track to that line. Okay. You also can have it track each individual word, kind of like how App Reader works in Zoom Text now, or you can have it uh, do no tracking at all. In the event that you just wanted to listen to what Image Reader was reading and you know not have your view taken away from you, so I'll show you track lines first, and then we'll show you the word uh, option as well. Uh, no tracking is obviously going to do nothing, so my screen wouldn't move at all. So I'll take a picture of our script here. Zoom text tip. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pause this. Um, Zoom tip. All right, so if I start reading, every time it encounters a new line of text, my view is going to scroll down. Okay, so it's output of my view now, but if I hit spacebar, it should track me back into view. Zoom text tips and tricks dash editing Neo Speech Dictionary. Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video for Zoom text. In today's video, we are going to show how you can modify the Neo Speech Dictionary to correct mispronunciation. Okay. Now, one thing I want to mention, so you probably noticed there that there were words off screen that were being read. Since we're only tracking lines, um, it's only going to move my view once it gets to a new line. Okay. So there's probably going to be text outside of my view, depending on my magnification level, that I'm not seeing. Um, if seeing each individual word is important to you while it's reading, you're going to want to go back into this preferences menu, again going to program, and choose track words. All right, so this will track every word as it's being read. Okay, so now let's start Neo speech. beginning. Click play or hit spacebar. Neo Speech Dictionary, hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video for Zoom text. In today's video, we are going to show how you can modify the Neo Speech Dictionary to correct mispronounced words. All right, so now you can see that it's um, it's tracking each individual word as it's reading. So no longer is it just tracking by line, but it's going by word uh, and, and basically bringing every word into view as it's being read. Words. Occasionally, the Neo Speech Synthesizer will incorrectly pronounce a word. Most often, this problem occurs with words that have unusual spellings. Okay. So you can see the difference between those two. Um, again, some people might not want it to track at all. So, um, you know, just to show you in here, if I chose no tracking and I click play or hit spacebar. Dash such is proper names, acronyms, and abbreviations. Notice that now my view doesn't move at all while it's reading when it's set to no tracking. Okay. So this is really a personal preference. Uh, it depends on what you want Zoom text to do while image reader is reading. The default behavior is to track lines because we felt, based on the feedback that we got from the field, um, that a lot of people thought that it was too much screen movement when tracking by lines. But you have those three options available to you. Okay. All right, so that covers um, what we're going to demonstrate here today. But obviously, if you guys have other questions, we can uh, we can try a few other things if anyone had anything in particular, but a couple um, other things I'll mention before we open it up to Q&A. Um, just wanted to reiterate what the pricing was. Okay, so retail price with the small A4 camera is $749, uh, large camera is $849, again, that's software and camera. But if you have ZoomText, if you're an existing ZoomText customer, uh, you get a $250 discount. So it's $4.99 and $5.99 if you already own ZoomText. So we give people that are current customers of ZoomText a uh, heavy discount on the product, which is very nice. Um, so now here's where we're going to open up the Q&A. Uh, I do have our sales and tech support hotlines listed on this slide if anyone needs them. Um, 
our website listed there, and also um, a link for our dealer network. Just go to AISquared.com forward slash dealers. Since this is not a product that you can trial, you can't download a copy of it, you need to have a physical camera uh, in order to evaluate it. Um, the best way to see this product or try, check it out or try it is to uh, contact one of our local dealers or one of our dealers that are local to you. So if you go to that dealers page, they're listed by state here in the U.S. and then country internationally. Uh, so if you have a dealer that's close to you, you can go and uh, converse with them and see if they have imagery here and uh, you can check it out with the local dealer. Okay. All right, so now uh, is when we're going to open it up to Q&A. Um, let's see, I think it looks like, uh, Debbie, you had your hand raised, but you raised it quite a while ago, so I don't know if we answered your question. Um, I'll just go ahead and unmute you and see if you had a question for us. Debbie, did you have a question? Okay, it doesn't sound like we can hear you on our end, so you might not have your microphone set up correctly. Um, in that case, just type in your question, we can answer it for you. Anyone else have questions, feel free to click that raise hand button or uh, type your question in. Uh, if there's anything you want to see that maybe we didn't cover that you're curious about or any questions on what we covered today, um, go ahead and just, just type it in or click that raise hand button and you can ask it to the group. And I will mention too while we're waiting to see uh, if there's other questions, magazines are generally going to be the most difficult thing you can throw at an OCR engine. Uh, we are using uh, Abby's OCR technology which uh, based on a lot of feedback and investigation of our own we found was the best of any available uh, third-party OCR engine. So theirs is certainly the best but you're going to find, um, you know, a lot of magazines like Sports Illustrated, Men's Health, things like that, uh, do not have their articles in a strict, you know, organized in a strict way. So you may have things that are read out of order, um, or like in that example where you had the very large first letter of a word, those getting dropped. That sort of intelligence is things that we're looking into uh, to see if we can add to our product in future versions. So. Um, hopefully that's something you'll see down the road in future versions of Image Reader. All right, any questions? I know we went through the demonstration. We've got plenty of time here um, for folks to ask questions. So uh, let's see. Uh, good question. John asked, um, well, he said Zoom Reader, but I think you meant Image Reader. Can Image Reader convert a PDF image document? Uh, right now, there's no way to convert the actual document file. Let's say it's an inaccessible PDF um, and convert it to a, an accessible version. There's no automated way to do that. We are looking into that feature for future releases of Image Reader. Uh, however, I will say that there are already products on the market that do that. Uh, in fact. Uh, Adobe Acrobat, the pro version of Adobe Reader, does that for you for free. I think the product is like $100. Um, there's also some other ones on the market that I think retail for $50 or less. Um, so there are solutions out there if you need that. Um, you could, if you're really um, diligent and knew what you were doing, you can go into, uh, maybe I can show this to you. You can go into Adobe Reader and I believe you can save it out as an image file. Uh, maybe not. That might have been an Acrobat. I'm trying to remember where that was. I um, thought there was a way to save it as a picture, to save each page as a picture. I might be thinking of the pro version, however. Um, but anyway, if it's a single page PDF, you could use the screen tool um, or even do a print screen of the document and process it through Image Reader. But multi-page documents, there's no easy way to automate that conversion yet. Um, let's see. Any other questions that came in? Uh, one thing I just want to mention, somebody asked about plans to combine CCTV and OCR. Right now, our Zoom Text camera feature and Image Reader utilize two different cameras. Um, basically, they're, they're two different use cases. One 
uh, the camera needs to be very close, so a, a short focal distance, and the other one needs a fixed focal distance. We would love to have one camera that can do both uh, features. However, we haven't found the right quality camera, both in terms of image quality and form factor that can accomplish that. Um, we are continuing to look for that, and hopefully we can find one product that will do both uh, sometime in the near future. There just isn't anything on the market right now that satisfies both requirements. Let's see. Um, somebody asked about uh, how often we plan to update the software. Generally, our, our releases are, we have maintenance releases, which are bug fixes, and sometimes new versions. Those are generally every six to ten weeks. That's true with Zimtext as well. Major product upgrades are generally anywhere from 18 to 24 months. Um, right now, we do not have any plans for an upgrade version of ImageReader any time in the near future. Um, but I can tell you that, that will be, there will be an image reader version 2.0 uh, at some time in the future, and we will be adding features to this product as well. Um, someone asked about how we compare to the competition. Um, I'll, I'll give you uh, a number of reasons why image reader um, is very is a significant option compared to those. First of all, price. Um, I think we are about half of what you'll find any other competitive product. Um, we also package Image Reader with its own document mat. Uh, it's a tactile document mat. It's cut custom fit to every camera. All these cameras have different lenses. They're all a little bit different. So we actually uh, pre-cut these mats uh, for each camera. So when it goes out of our warehouse, your actual mat is cut to the camera that you get. So the nice thing about the mat is even if you don't have any vision, you can feel where you need to place both the camera and your document. So it takes all the guesswork out. Other products make it very difficult. You might have a mat, but it's just a generic mat. You have to look on screen and make sure that you've got it oriented in the right area of the mat. It might be cut off, uh, and you might not know it if you can't see well enough to do that. So that's one of the main benefits. It's also very portable. Um, the cameras are, are lightweight. Uh, USB power, there's no external power source, and the product is really easy to use. Um, there's a simple set of hotkeys, uh, the toolbar is very intuitive, easy to understand what the buttons do. Uh, some other products are very complex um, and you know have options uh, in there that might confuse people. So I think you know, based on things like price, the mat, and ease of use um, makes uh, Image Reader a very compelling product. Uh, versus other options that are out there. Uh, John asked a good question. Can Image Reader read script fonts? It cannot. There is no OCR engine out there that can read script fonts that I'm aware of. So things like handwriting uh, and cursive fonts, um, just not any way to deal with those just yet. Um, Linda asked, can you direct me to a webinar to use this as a standalone without Zoom text? Well, there's no real, there's nothing you really need to do to use it as a standalone product. It's got its own icon on the desktop. Um, there is a webinar that we did uh, on using Image Reader that goes through things like hotkeys. But if you already own Zoom text uh, and you need to uh, see things magnified, uh, then I would recommend using Image Reader with Zoom text. But if you go we just changed our website. Um, so if you go to our home page now and click on the Learning tab, on the left-hand side, there's a link that says, what does it say? Can you remind me? Um, it's under, you have to click on Free Webinars, and then underneath that says Recorded Content. So that's where all of our, every single webinar we do, we record. And there is one, I think it's just called Introducing Zintex Image Reader. That yep. we, we definitely touched on the fact that you can use it with Zintex, but I think that was maybe only a minute or two of the webinar, so that might be more helpful. Yeah, I would check that out, Linda, because we do go through things like hotkeys and, and basic uh, use of Image Reader, um, which might be helpful for you. But yeah, it, since it's a standalone application, you don't need to use it with Zoom Text or anything else. Um, it's got its own set of hotkeys. It's got its own set of voices, um, so it's not required. 
Someone asked about the number of megapixels that the cameras are. They are five megapixel cameras. Um, let's see. John asked if ImageReader can read other scanned documents. Well, with the screen tool, you can really read any text that's visible on your screen. So, I mean, I'm not sure what you mean by other scanned documents, but any content on your computer, um, you know, you could use that screen tool and have it read back to you in ImageReader. Okay, or you could take a screenshot of it um, and process it that way as well. I think we covered some of those things in that um, in that other image reader webinar that Becca was just referring to. So um, some of you guys might want to check that out after this uh, as well. Lots of good questions, by the way, so keep them coming. And like I said, um, if you do have your mic set up, oh, it looks like... Um, Linda, you, I just noticed you had your hand raised, but I think we might have already answered your question. Linda, did you have another question? No. Okay. All right. Let's see. Were there any questions that you saw come in that you want to mention to the group? might be helpful. No, oh, I did the same thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there was anything that covered that. Okay. Uh, another thing I'll mention too, um, if you have follow-up questions to today uh, that maybe we didn't answer, you can always email us. Our email address is learning at AISquared.com. Pam asked a good question. She asked if she can get a copy of this webinar. Um, I am recording it, so we'll put it on our website uh, very shortly, if not later today, uh, sometime tomorrow. We do generally record all of our webinars and put them available on our website. They're also on our YouTube page. If you go to youtube.com forward slash AI squared, you can find all of our content there. Um, but like I mentioned, we did change our website. so. Um, maybe I'll just go ahead and show you guys where this is now. Um, so if you go to uh, go to AISquared.com, you're going to see a brand new tab up here that says Learning. All right, so if you click on the Learning tab on the left-hand side, click on Free Live Webinars, and then Recorded Content. In here, you'll find all the webinars that we have uh, pre-recorded. There's the What's New in Zoom Text 10, and for some reason I can't scroll with the keyboard. There we go. Uh, new user introduction, and any of the um, here's our introduction to Image Reader webinar listed here as well. Zoom Text Mac, and all the advanced webinars we did one on uh, Zoom Text for Windows 8 last week. So if you missed that, you can check that out there. This is where we're going to put uh, today's webinar under the advanced webinars heading. All right, so look for that. Uh, later on today, and we should get it up by the end of the day today, uh, if not tomorrow morning. Okay, so that's where all of our recorded content is. Um, there's going to be a lot of new stuff that we're adding in here. I'll mention it since we're talking about it now, but under the learning heading, we have links for uh, our Zoomtex University in-person training. So if you are interested in taking a two-day course on how to use Zoomtex, basically a crash course in every single feature on the product, um, check that out on the learning page as well. Uh, there's a class schedule listed there uh, also. And we're also launching a brand new uh, program today, very shortly, called the Zintex Certification Program. Uh, this is an online, paid online exam. Uh, if you pass it, you get a print and digital certificate. Two levels of certification available. One is called Zintex Essentials, which is just targeted at the PC product. And then Zintex Professional Certification. Uh, which is um, which covers all of our products, image readers and text Mac. Um, so this certification will, you know, allow you to allow us to certify your knowledge of the product that you uh, have knowledge of how to use Zintext and its features. Um, this will not certify you to be able to train the product. Uh, I want to I want to uh, be strict about that, but it will, um, you know, basically certifies your knowledge and that you. Uh, 
are able to understand and use the product. Okay, so that's something we're launching brand new today um, that you might get, see an email about in your inbox. Okay, any other questions for us here today? Oh, this is a, okay. This is a, an interesting question that John brought up. Um, his employer scans vehicle owner titles and files them in their database, and he's asking if Image Reader would be able to read the title or a picture of the scanned title. So the cool thing is, and I'll show this to you, um, is Image Reader can process uh, image files. So. Remember, I went up here uh, under that source menu and chose screen before, but there's a file option. So, for example, um, I could choose a bitmap image, a JPEG, or a PNG image file and have that OCR. So, for example, I have a picture here of our logo, okay, and so I could open that we image reader. We're making accessibility simple. And notice that it'll read it. Uh, if we look at the picture, it's just a picture, a small picture of our logo, and it will read the text. So if, if your employer created a scanned picture image of, of that title, let's say you saved it out as a JPEG or a PNG, you could import that into Image Reader and have it read back to you. All right, so that would be uh, one way that you could uh, accomplish that. Really good question, by the way, um, and, and definitely an interesting use of image reader. Um, just, John, to follow up with you, someone uh, asked what files uh, did I say you could import into Image Reader. The image file formats were bitmap, uh, JPEG, or PNG are the three image file formats. Um, there's been a couple questions about buying Image Reader without the camera or using it with different cameras. Um, we don't sell Image Reader as just software alone. It always comes with uh, the camera. Um, there's been a couple exceptions where people have already had the camera hardware, the actual one that we are um, uh, we are putting in our packages, which is a, called a DESO, is the camera model. However, uh, you have to realize one of the benefits of this product is the camera mat. So if you had your own camera and you get home and you install Image Reader and you can't figure out why you're getting bad results or everything's cut off, well, not having, uh, you know, our camera with the mat is going to make things a lot more difficult. So we don't have any plans on selling this um, as just software only. It will be sold with the camera. Um, somebody asked if the camera is fixed or handheld. Um, it has a, well, I can show you a picture of it. Maybe that will help. Um, it's kind of an L-shaped design. The camera does uh, kind of collapse for portability, but let's just go in here and I'll show you a picture of what it looks like. Um, you can't adjust the focal length of it. So here's a picture of the camera right here, kind of this L-shaped design, and then there's the camera mat underneath. There's a little notch in the mat where you put the, uh, the camera, and then the black area is where you place your document, okay? So I guess you could say it's fixed. That would probably be the best way to describe it. It's not handheld. Um, it does the the A4 camera does easily fit in the backpack. Uh, I think it's about what is that? Maybe 14 inches tall. Um, the A3 camera, the much is much larger. Uh, it's probably oh, is there? 
There you go. Yeah, so here are the dimensions here. Um, let's see. Yeah, your folded dimensions here. 4, 4.1 by 3.5 by 13.8. So that was a good estimate. I said 14 inches. I was only off by 0.2 inches. Um, and the other camera is, let's see how tall that one is. I was guessing about 2 feet. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than that. It's 20.9 inches tall. Okay. All those dimensions are on our website in case you're curious, if you want to make sure it'll fit in your backpack or something like that. And like I said, I, I think most people are going to settle on the A4, the letter size camera, unless you have a specific need for reading larger content um, all the time, or this is a desktop setup and you're not going to be taking it with you. Because um, like I said, the larger camera, uh, you know, is slightly less portable only because of its size. It's a lot taller than the other camera. It is nice for something like a cookbook. If you're in the kitchen or something, you want to rescue that out loud, it is nice because most recipes don't tend to fit on just one page. Uh, so that might be a good use. Because it does really, you know, think of a magazine or a book open, it would be both those pages in one. And all the hotkeys, by the way, for image reader can be performed with one hand. Uh, they're all really easy to learn as well. So again, if you're interested in learning more about how to use ImageReader, uh, definitely check out that pre-recorded webinar that we mentioned a few minutes ago. All right, any other questions for us here today? By the way, lots of good questions, um, lots of interesting questions about how, how uh, people might be using the product um, either at home and work. So. Uh, thank you guys for all the questions so far. Uh, good question. Uh, Jim asked, if you take two pictures, will it create a two-page document? Uh, the way ImageReader works right now is it's, um, if you were exporting it out as a document, it's just whatever you took a picture of is one document file. There's no way to do multiple pages and save them uh, into one document. One thing you could do um, so there's no way to do like batch processing, I guess would be the way to, to describe it. If you had uh, a book and you wanted to scan 10 pages and save it into one document, there's no easy way uh, to do that. What you could do is when you've taken a picture um, of, let's say it's the first page of a book, uh, you could easily copy that text into a document. So remember when I did the demonstration of Zoom Text Recorder, I said I was pressing Control A to select all of the text. You can do the same thing, hit Control A and then Control C to copy it, open up Microsoft Word or any other word processor, paste it in, go back into Image Reader, and then capture your second page. So you'd click the capture button, go back and take the next picture, copy and paste into your document, rinse, repeat. Um, so again, there's no easy way to do it that's built into the software, but we're looking into adding features like that into future versions that would make kind of like a book mode, uh, if you will, uh, add into the product. So it is possible now, there's just not an automated way to do it in the software. Um, Debbie asked about where she can find reviews on ImageReader. That's a good question. I don't know of, I mean, I don't know if there's been any other, any independent reviews of the product yet. Did, have you seen any come through? I don't know of. I, um, I was just telling her that you know it's, it's a pretty new product for us. It's only a couple months old, so you know you could try just simply googling and seeing if somebody has a blog or something and they have to write a review. Um, but I did mention to her that we have a return policy. I believe it's thirty days. Yeah. Um, so what's nice about that is because there's no trial, it's hard to know if it's going to work for you, and we're pretty confident it will. But um, this way, you can always return it for a full refund if it doesn't quite meet your needs or it's just not what you what you were hoping for. Yeah, and as I mentioned too, um, 
if you wanted to try it or see this in person, definitely check out um, the dealers section of our website and see if there's one close to you. There might be one right in your backyard uh, you could reach out to uh, and may have a copy of Image Reader. You could come in and check it out. I'm sure that they would gladly do that for you um, if you're interested in purchasing. But I think just in general, uh, I think the response to this product has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, I can't say that I've really heard anyone say anything negative uh, about the product. So everyone that has purchased it and used the product and seen what it's done um, is very intrigued by it and, and thinks that it works great. Um, again, it's at a really great price point compared to other options that are out there as well. So uh, that was that was part of our... Uh, our goal with this product is, again, make it easy to use, make it affordable, um, and also portable so people can take it with them if they're going from home to work uh, with the different camera options. Jim asked a good question. Do you need to have a ZoomText license to use this software? The answer is no. Um, Image Reader is its own product. It can be used as a standalone product without ZoomText. However, if you have if you currently own or have owned a copy of ZoomText, we give you a $250 discount on any image reader purchase. So if you're a current customer of ours already running ZoomText, we give you a significant discount on the product. And you can use the two together, but it's not required that you buy ZoomText in order to use image reader. Good question. I just noticed, Wesley, you had your hand raised up, uh, so I'll go ahead and unmute you. Wesley, did you have a question for us? And it doesn't sound like we're getting anything on our end, so um, I'll leave you unmuted in case, in case your mic isn't set up correctly. Uh, but if you do have a question, feel free to type it in as well. But it doesn't sound like we can hear you on our end. All right, any other questions for us here today before we end the webinar? Uh, good question. John asked, uh, how much does lighting affect image reader? Um, lighting is going to play a part. I mean, the good thing is the cameras themselves have a built-in light source that you can turn on or off. It's actually a dial, so you can control the intensity as well. Uh, the main thing that you want to avoid are shadows. Um, if you have direct overhead light that's creating a shadow, that can impact the OCR results. Uh, generally, if you are looking at material that is non-reflective, uh, turning the light on will help. Not in all cases, but in many cases having it on will help. Um, if you're dealing with reflective material like the newspaper, or excuse me, the magazines that I was using earlier, you want to have the light turned off for that. Because what happens is if you have overhead light, it's going to create a hot spot, which will uh, basically make that image hard to process. It'll be hard to tell if there's text, if there's a huge hot spot in the middle of your picture. So lighting does play a role, but as long as you've got an evenly lit room, uh, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. You may have to experiment with different things, like having the light on or off, um, as well as using the crop feature. Uh, but as long as you're aware uh, that it does have an impact, um, and basically, again, shadows are going to be the worst uh, culprit. So as long as you're aware of that, you know, um, I think you'll be fine. In general, your results with this product are going to be really good. Uh, it's only when you get into, you know, extreme, extremely complex uh, documents that have overlays and different colored text or that have uh, you know, I'll give you an example just to um, see if I can find this here. One thing that is a problem, and this is true of any OCR engine, uh, if you have an article like what I'm going to show you on screen here in a second, if you have an article like this, oops, click on 
clicked on the wrong thing here. Um, if you have an article like this, okay, we've got the text and then a huge overlay of a letter, all right, which is red text, which is blocking out half <laughs> of one line of text and basically drawn over the top of all the text. This is going to cause problems. Um, the OCR engine just is going to have a hard time handling when a line of text is drawn over the top with different colors, and really that's making the contrast very poor of the document. So, you know, this is an extreme situation, but, you know, again, that might be something that you uh, may encounter. Um, and there's just no way to handle that. That's not a standard format that you're going to see in a newspaper or anything like that. But a lot of these magazines try and do things design and creative-wise um, that might give the OCR engine some trouble. So just something to be aware of. Um, you know, again, this is this would be true with any product, any OCR engine on the market. Um, there's just no intelligence built in for when people do things like that in magazines. Uh, let's see. It looks like someone had their hand up. Bob, you had your hand up. I'll go ahead and unmute you. Um, Bob, did you have a question for us? Uh, yes, I'm having to live about an hour away from where you are in Manchester Center, and I'm wondering if I can come over there and actually see this product and put my hands on it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, of course, because I don't think there's any dealers uh, around the real. Bob, okay, where are you Bob, located? Um, over near Keene, New Hampshire. I don't know if you know where that is. Yep. Yeah, if you just give us a call, I mean, that's certainly something that we could arrange, and uh, one of us could meet with you. If it's not me, someone else could show you the product. It's not a problem. Great. Okay, thanks. Yep, you're welcome. All right, any other questions for us? You're very welcome, John. Uh, glad that you enjoyed the webinar, and uh, hopefully imagery will work out for you with the, uh, the, the title situation at work. And someone mentioned too, uh, and I didn't, I didn't realize this, and it's an interesting point. So the uh, article that I just showed you with a huge T in the middle of it, he said that it was an anti-photocopy technique. So uh, that's, to get, <laughs> that's to combat print piracy, if you will. So while we're trying to protect that, we're also making it more difficult for people to access the print. So it's kind of a, I don't know, what is that, a lose-lose situation? Or Michael Scott would say, is it a lose-lose-lose? <laughs> All right, and again, um, any last-minute questions, uh, feel free to, to type them in. Otherwise, um, feel free to email us, learning at AISquared.com. We can pick up any follow-ups that you might have there as well. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, so thank you guys for attending today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the webinar. There were a lot of great questions, and uh, hopefully we were able, able to answer all of those for you. Um, so thanks again, and uh, have a great rest of the day.